Hi guys, this is Nala from Perfect Balance Clinic and I've got some a series of movements here that are not going to only increase the range of motion in your ankles but improve the strength and resiliency of them. So let's get to it. In terms of equipment, the only thing you're going to need is a foam roller, a tennis ball or lacrosse ball and a yoga block or a book. All right, so first we have the ankle assessment. This is a really good way to just check to see if the range has improved with some of the movements that we're going to be going through today. So what you want to do is just line yourself up against a wall and you're going to send the knee as far over towards past the toe whilst keeping the heel down and just keep going back away from the wall until you can't get the knee to touch anymore and that's going to be the distance and you might notice that one side will be tighter than the other. You can just mark it with a little pen, check the other side and then you can always come back and do a retest at the end of these movements. Once you've done that, we're going to make our way over to the mats. You'll need a lacrosse ball, a tennis ball, something quite firm that you can place underneath the sole of your feet. We're going to start releasing the soles of the feet here. So this is a really good way to start to just open up all the connective tissue and the fascia underneath, especially the plantar fascia. You might notice there's certain areas of the foot, the underside of the foot that's really tender. Often the arch can be quite tender and the where the, where the heel bone meets the arch, so sort of the base of the calcaneus. So just work through both feet. You just want to spend about 60 seconds on each side, just releasing any tension that comes up in either foot. And then once we've done that, then we're going to make our way down onto the floor. So you'll need a foam roller and we're going to release the calves. So just taking one leg up onto the foam roller, maybe placing the other one on top. You're going to have to lift your body off here and just start to gently sweep all the way up the leg until you get to just below the knee. And you're just sussing out any sort of tension hotspots here. This is all going to have an effect on how the muscles and the tendons and the tissues can open up and therefore give you more ability in the joint to move freely. So if these are restricted on the areas, if these tissues are restricted, it's going to affect your ability to move your ankle well or whichever joint you're working on. So just go on both sides, again about 60 seconds, one to two minutes per side. Feel free to pause this video at any time. So you make sure you get the right amount of release work for you. When you get to a little hot spot or a tension hot spot, feel free to laterally roll as well as moving up and down. So feel free to go side to side as well as up and down. Once you've sussed your hot spots, you're going to work into them a little bit deeper with that tennis ball or lacrosse ball. Place your ball on top of an object. So I've got a yoga block here that just gives you a little bit more height to work the ball into those sticky spots. Now here I'm just tracing up my Achilles tendon because I can get quite tight in the Achilles here. So I'm just releasing any tender spots and then you might find it will take one or two minutes for those tension spots to release. So use the breath here, really important to use a long exhale to keep the nervous system in quite a calm state so the muscles don't tense up. When you get to your tension hot spot, start to dorsiflex the ankle. This will give you a little bit more length in the tissue as you're releasing it. So just up and down a few times with the ankle and you'll feel everything start to release. Beautiful, and let's just move on to the other side, the same thing working into the tender spots. And then once you find that area of tension, just hold it there. Wait till some of that tenderness goes down and then start to add a little bit of movement through the ankle by dorsiflexing, pulling the toes towards the shins and dropping them back down again. 
Again, just spend about one to two minutes per side. Beautiful. Coming away from that, we're going to work into some ankle mobility here. So these are controlled rotations. So the way that I want you to hold the leg is I want you to hook your arm underneath the thigh and really lock the shin into position. This stops the shin from doing any movement. Really tense through the foot as if you're moving the foot through treacle, you're going to create three big circles with the ankle joint, one direction. Then you're gonna move into the other side. So really pull the toes towards the shins and pull them down towards the floor. So you might find you will experience a little bit of foot cramp here if you're not used to this big range of motion, especially with the foot under tension. And as I said, just be mindful of that shin not trying to do the work for you. So up and down a few times after this, so three and three, and then just really dorsiflex and plant to flex the foot five times before you move on to the other side. So three big circles, keep the shin really still, really pull the toes around and try to create as big a range of motion as you can in the ankle joint. This is a really good way of letting our, our brain know how much movement we have in the ankle here. And then go through the other direction. Again, working your way almost through treacle. So very slow, very calculated movement. And once you've done three and three, then you're going to dorsiflex and plantiflex the foot. So pulling the toes up and pointing them away. Again, working your way through treacle with the ankle under tension. We're now going to start to come into some loaded stretching. So I'd like you to come into a half kneeling squat or a fisherman's pose. And what you want to try and do here is just make your way um, over your foot, so the foot that's resting on the floor, and start to just shift your body weight over and try to send the knee as far over the toes as you possibly can. Now just work a little bit into the ankle here so you can see I'm just lifting and lowering the heel, just getting a good stretch on the Achilles in the calf as the heel drops down. Now I want you to stay in this position for one to two minutes. Um, what you're going to work on is a little bit of active work through the calf and the Achilles and then also the front of the shin, so the anterior tibialis. So what I'd like you to do is once you've stayed here for a couple of minutes, you're gonna press the ball of the foot into the floor as if you were trying to lift your heel off. So it's called plantar flexion but you're not gonna physically move anywhere. You're just pressing the ball of the foot quite firmly down into the ground. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to try and bring the ball of the foot off of the floor. And as you do that, try and edge your way over the foot. So try to send the knee over the foot, deepening the dorsiflexion in your ankle. We're gonna do that on the other side. So we're gonna find the stretch first. Again, find your end range stretch. Start to shift your body over the foot. Get a good stretch through the back of the calf and the ankle. And once you've found that end stretch, hold it for one to two minutes. Then you're gonna to start to push the ball of the foot down in towards the ground, so creating a slight plantar flexion in the ankle, but the heel doesn't lift off of the floor. Hold this for five to 10 seconds, so really push down. You'll feel the calf muscles working really hard to facilitate this. And then you're going to pull the foot up towards the shin, activating the front of the shin muscles as you pull that knee over the toe. Hold this for five to 10 seconds.
and release and just make your way in and out of this stretch a few times. It's quite a deep, intense stretch, but it's very effective in starting to work on increasing that range of motion in your ankle. Beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna to start to work on strengthening the calf muscles, which also strengthens the ankle and all the stabilizers around. So walk your feet back until you've got a long line from your heels to your head. Push your hips forward so you get a good calf stretch. Now from there, you're gonna really press into the balls of the feet and the big toes and lift the heels up as high as you possibly can whilst keeping the hips forward. So try not to sink the butt back and break at the hips. So really keep the hips open and extended. We're gonna go for 25 reps here, really pressing into the balls of the feet. Try not to roll onto the outside edges of the foot, even though you want to keep contact with the outside of the ball of the foot, so the fifth metatarsal head, you want to put a lot of the force through the big toe joint. So heels up as high as you can. Keep going. You might start to notice that the calves get a little tired here. It's a good thing we've got them working. Great range of motion. Now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to strengthen the front of the shin muscles. So sit the hips back into the wall, walk the feet out, and you're going to pull the feet up towards the shins. Try not to cheat here. It's really easy to use the upper body for a little bit of momentum. I want you to try and isolate this movement just from the front of your shin. We're going to go in for 25 reps here. You can see here I'm starting to get a little bit fatigued so my upper body is starting to shift and move. So I guess that's an example of what not to do. <laughs> All right, we're gonna to start to work on some eversions and inversions. So I'd like you to roll onto the outside of your feet. And as you roll onto the inside of your feet, I always want to see if you can Mexican wave your toes. So you're gonna articulate through each of the toes rolling one toe down at a time, just getting a little bit more control and dexterity through the feet. Try not to cave the knees in when you invert, so come into the inside of the feet. And try to articulate just from the foot, so really using all of the foot muscles here to create this movement. Let's aim for about six reps of this. Good stuff, give them a little shake out. We're now gonna move on to the next movement, which is starting to work on some stability and balance training. So standing on one leg, you'll need your ball back. And you're just gonna start really simply by just taking that ball overhead. So you can see here I'm doing various different heights, coming down low, coming down high, and we're really trying to train that adaptability of the body. So you want to think of your base leg as a soft pliable leg, so try not to be too solid through it. Bend into the ankle, bend into the knee, and allow the movement to absorb through the entire leg. When you get tired, you're gonna move on to the other side. So again, I'd aim for between 30 to 60 seconds. You want to try and avoid putting the floating leg down onto the floor. And feel free to get as creative as you like with the ball here. Not all rehab and prehab work needs to be boring and repetitive. So a little bit of non-linear work can really do us a favor in terms of training for that adaptability. Again, give the legs a little shake out. Okay. This one's quite challenging. You're gonna need a block or a book to stand on. And if this is too much, feel free to just do away with the book or the block. And you're just going to put the ball of your foot and the toes on your object. Now from there, this might be enough, just trying to hold your balance and not fall. You'll really feel the ankle stabilizer muscles working very hard and all the foot muscles. If you want a little bit more, we're gonna to start to work a little bit in transverse plane, so across the body. 
So we're gonna reach the opposite hand down and across the leg, open up the body and try to reach up and away to the right. So I'm reaching to the left low and the right high. Again, I have done this many a times and failed at this. Uh, so if you are falling about all over the place, again, just take away the block, the book, work on the floor. And even just doing this on your single leg with your heel down might be challenging enough. When that gets stronger, you can lift the heel slightly as if you were just gonna slide a piece of paper underneath. When you get stronger at that, you can lift the heel even more. And when you get stronger, then you can work onto the block or the book. So we're just gonna aim for about three to five here, nice and controlled, nice and slow. Be very present and focused whilst you're doing this. Beautiful. Okay, the last movement we're gonna work on here is coming into some leg slides. So this is just starting to apply the knee over the toe, coming into a lot more dorsiflexion. Just sliding one leg out as far out in front of you as you possibly can, whilst keeping the base leg and the heel down. So really actively using the shin muscle on that, on that base leg to pull the knee forwards as you reach as far as you possibly can with your floating leg. Just aim for five to 10 per side. We're gonna go back and do another set. So if we get, I'm just showing you from a different angle here, just trying to send that foot out as far as you can. Don't let the heel creep off. Beautiful, and that is a wrap. You should find, if you go and do a retest, that you should have a little bit more range through the ankle. So beautiful work, everyone. Send me a message. Feel free to put in the comments box whether you like this video, and hope to see you again.